Welcome back. Amaro Colitessier is an entrepreneur, manufacturer, innovator, and the founder of Mara Cruz Organics and the Manufacturer's Hub. She strongly believes you don't need a huge capital to build and grow a solid business and set up the Manufacturer's Hub to help startups develop strategies, systems, and structure for a profitable manufacturing business. Remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or at Wayshow Africa with the hashtag Ways or you SMS 0818038463. Thanks for joining us, Samara. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now, I love your hair, by the way. I uh, just got it. Amara is Natural just, hair, you know, yeah. let me tell you guys a small story. Oh, so, Amara has this beautiful, she had this beautiful fro, right. like natural oh, hair. Like hey. yours? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So she, so, um, so she just launched a new product. So yeah. she was um, launching a new product to try for relaxed hair. I've never seen somebody that experiments on herself. I said, Marie, it's because you have good genes. <laughs> so because she was trying out the new products for relaxed hair, she now relaxed her she hair. So now hair. she, I just saw her today. She's telling me that she's going back. Going back to natural. <laughs> Amara, this is your... <laughs> wow. I, I love your... <laughs> I love your spirit, though. But you are an amazing um, researcher and businesswoman you know and um the reason we we actually thought of to call you for this particular show is because we know that now right now a lot of people are wanting to go into um going into bringing made in nigeria products building their brands and all of that but we see a lot of people go doing it you know slightly the wrong way you know so and i know that you have put in a lot of work to your product you know in this especially in the hair care business so tell us you know what do you think is the right strategies for starting up okay a small business you know especially i like the fact that you don't like you don't want us to spend too much money you know <laughs> but we want to build it Affordable. you know and grow the yeah. business to a large scale yeah okay so um the first one when you talk about strategies actually where you're starting up right mm -hmm. so um the first thing to make sure is that you're actually solving a problem in the market space so you don't go into oh, i want to make skincare products or hair care i want to bake cakes because everybody's doing it or probably you see a friend doing it and then you feel the friend is making money so you need to first find out what problem you're uh, product is solving in the market space. Is there enough market market size for the product you want to actually launch out in the market? Have you done a thorough research to actually find out people who are going to buy this product when you launch it? So that's the first step. Seeing how your idea will go to market in a profitable way. Awesome. Awesome. So for you, why did you even decide to start the manufacturer's hub? Okay, so for the um, manufacturers hub, I noticed that a lot of um, women manufacturers, because that's my target market, they struggle with building their business. So a lot of times you see that people feel that, oh, I just wake up, I post my products on Instagram, people should just rush, come and buy, or I have a Facebook page, people should rush, come and buy. But without putting the structures that is actually... Um, that would help them to build the business to be very sustainable. So you notice that a year, two, three, some of them are like, oh, this business is not profitable. Months in, months out, their, their accounts will be like red and they give up. So, but if they know how to actually start a business that will be profitable, knowing exactly what their profit margin is, knowing exactly the structures to put in place so that the business can even run when they are not around. If they're able to do those things, it will help them to start the business in a good way and also be able to scale and scale, expand scale. the business. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. You want to so, so you're in the manufacturing space and you know manufacturing thrives on the value chain model. So there are different um, areas that are entry points, if you like, which mm -hmm. are very important steps towards creating an actual product. For someone who wants to start um, a business in this space, what would you advise? Do you just look at one element of the value chain or do you just go at it all at once? How would you approach it? Okay, so for value chain, actually, you need to um, find what your strength is. Like, for instance, when I started Marcus Organics, I had options to start from producing the oils we use in manufacturing and also uh, sourcing the raw materials in a way that I probably grow some of them myself. Right. But then that's not my strength. Farming is not my strength. My strength is actually manufacturing these products and distributing it to moms and African ladies who need it. So I, I noticed that it's best for me to buy this raw material from credible sources. I, I actually took my time to do that. So I buy it and then I produce and distribute. That's my strength. So I wouldn't say, oh, bro, I want to get 
get all the profit and gain and then I'm Single doing from off. beginning to end. No. But if you feel that you also want to do both, is based on actually what you know you can sustain over time. So, um, talking about scaling your business, right? So, as a finance professional, I know that a lot of businesses, um, when it's time to scale, uh, they typically, even at the startup stage, so they will typically look for angel investors or, you know, use crowdfunding, which is like an alternative source of funding, or they will actively seek out bank loans or yeah. look for small business grants, etc. Right? For you, it was interesting to learn that you scaled your business without external funding. So yeah. I find that very interesting. Could you please share how you were able to do that um, successfully? Okay, so for almost four years, I didn't approach any investors, I didn't go to any bank, and, because first I wanted to understand my business properly. I wanted to put structures in place. I wanted to make sure that business is actually profitable so that if I'm going to say I'm looking for this loan, I know exactly the place I want to put the money into. So it's not just I want a loan because I want to um, get this, get that. I don't even know if I need at that moment. So that was the major reason why I didn't go out looking for money. I wanted to see what I can do with my own money, how I can grow this business. So that when I'm talking, when I'm saying I need this particular money, I know exactly. Yeah, you know exactly, exact, yes, you know exact what I'm putting in for 50,000. <laughs> it's one million you are collecting, exactly. you know the exact outputs. Yes. And the yeah. pitch will be compelling. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And then when you're talking about the product, you're pitching it in such a way that people know you know what you're doing. So it's not just like, oh, I need 10 million. What do you need it for? You don't right. even know. Yeah, you don't exactly. 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 Wow. Okay. So <laughs> now tell us, because um, I see a lot of people right now manufacturing all sorts of skincare products, all sorts of hair care products, especially because manufacturing um, business right now is more of the skincare, hair care. I've mm -hmm. not really, I've not seen, um, I've not, well, clothing is, is not, yeah. it's not hazardous to our, uh, mm -hmm. our health, <laughs> yeah. it's clothes. True. True. You know, but I see all sorts of chemicals and all of that. So where is, in? so now we're talking, if you want to scale your business, you know, I know that you need to put certain structures in place like your NAVDAC and all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, so what do you think we can begin to do to regulate some of these mm. things? Because we see all sorts of products out there that nobody is checking. Quality control. The quality control yeah. is not there. You put mm. in a lot of it. I mean, I wish you can see her uh, hair care line, beautiful packaging, so much attention to detail and everything. So you, when I'm using well her done. product, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm using her product, you know, you will feel confident that this thing was yeah, well, sure well thought out right. and the product is, I feel okay, comfortable, yes, to you, use it. Okay. But that is not what is, I mean, the, the case that's out there. Everything is, you know. Mm -hmm. So how do we begin to even curb that? You know, because I like the idea of the manufacturer's hub, for instance. Imagine if we have more people sign up to the manufacturer's hub mm -hmm. to now have people put in certain standards, you know, in terms of, do you help with sourcing of the raw materials? Do you tell people this is the, the quality place to go and get your raw materials right. and all of that? So how do you think we can put structures in that, you know? Okay, so uh, there is a lot of, um, how do I put it, lack of information is actually one of the major reasons. Like, sometimes when I talk to manufacturers, like, oh, the requirements of NAVDAC is too much, I need so, yeah. so amount of money, uh, they are, uh, it's too, I can't do it and all that. But it's actually something you can plan towards, save up money to actually get it done. So in terms of the manufacturers, we are doing our bit to um, educate. Support. Then in terms of the government as well, I feel that NAVDAC should do more in terms of maybe like coming up with seminars or places where they can actually encourage people to meet. I know they did quite a lot of that last year, but I, they should encourage more of that. So people know that it is now actually easy mm. to get these things done. What mm. and what is needed? How do you put more good awareness. manufacturing practice here into? Because these things are for the benefit of the people manufacturing as well, but most of them don't know that it's for their benefit because you can't run a business or have a sustainable business if those manufacturing practices that are actually approved is not in place. You can't scale, you can't expand that business. So mm. thank a lot of information needs to be circulated, circulated yes. Right. So, <coughs> you wanted to go? Yes, I have yeah. a question. Okay. So, um, so, you know about the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, right? Yeah. So, um, we, Nigeria took their time to sign because there was a lot of pushbacks and the potential from the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria mm -hmm. saying that it was going to then, um, what's it called? create more competition mm -hmm. and maybe in fact reduce the um, demand for local products. Local content. And there's a different mm -hmm. lens to look at it from. So there's also, this is a this, an opportunity to serve a 1.2 billion 
um, people markets, if you like. So, what what's your view? What is this an opportunity in this space? Like, if we if all of this is implemented, and you know the, the barriers, the borders are now open for us to serve bigger markets, and we're talking about scale. You know, do you want to look beyond Nigeria, and how does um, a business at this stage start to prepare for this kind of opportunity? Okay, so um, looking beyond Nigeria in terms of exporting, right? Yes. Right. Okay, so in terms of exporting, actually it depends on the product the person has. So if your product is not fresh, like it's products that you can actually export, you can look into how you can manufacture this product here and also export it. Already we are exporting to two African countries. Yeah, so we export to um, Cotonou, Benin Republic, and also to oh. Ghana. Yeah. So, but then it's about having. Um, the capacity, us building the capacity to be able to actually do that. So that does that. In summary, right? right. So, because the question I was, I was going to ask was yeah. about the manufacturing now. I know that for you to go into full time manufacturing, especially at that scale where you begin to export, right. you would need a lot of funding, you need a lot of mm -hmm. capital and all of that. That's you huge. know, it's a huge capital. So, I How um, start to, start to think, of, How think about yes. range, processing, and all of that that you didn't, yeah. you didn't think about when you were still at yes. that, um, um, the smaller Small stage of maybe yeah. servicing a few uh, clientele. Nice. So, how do you think um, the government? If you ask, maybe I would ask the government, how do you think the government can help the people in the manufacturing industry to scale their businesses? Okay, so I feel there are a lot of funds coming up now, especially yes. for women, yes. like yes. in body manufacturing yes. sectors and all that. So I, I think the government and some other institutions are doing their bits now, coming out more to support. Like few, few years ago, last day was, there were a lot of funds circulating. There's this CBN to Agnes loan, yeah, that is available for yeah. people who have passed through the... Um, um, educational institution for business training because they want to make sure that these people also know how to run a business. So I think it also depends on us as the manufacturers or entrepreneurs to um, build that capacity in a way that these loans can now be make, made available to us because sometimes the money might be there but because we don't really know what we want or we don't know how to push for it, we don't really get it. We don't have the So uh, is that part of what you're going to be teaching people yeah, of at course. the manufacturers yeah. So if we have women okay because you say you're focused on women if we have women that want to sign up on this manufacturers hub they'll be able to get all those information yes. and the processing do you help them to the very last detail yeah we do we do awesome. so we start from start like from them building their business model okay. to knowing what their pricing is as regards to profit margin, keeping their books and records right. Because sometimes you might just be doing business, you're making sales, you're, making spend, you're spending money, but you don't really know what is left at the end of the day because you're not recording it right. So we take them through how to do their inventory right using a software because with that you can do a reporting system to actually see exactly what you've done in a month, in six months, in one year. So we take them through all those marketing, structure, sales, distribution, so that they actually so when the money comes or they, they see opportunity to scale their business using getting access to huge uh, money, they can mm -hmm. say, oh, I'm ready for this, see my book. They can do a report to say, this is the structures I've put in place. I know where this money is going and all that. So that's I see, actually I see the we're doing. just smiling. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. love that. So that, that's housekeeping, right? So if you talk to the regular small business owner and you say, oh, what's the top problem, what's the number one problem you have? They say, oh, it's access to finance, but it really isn't. Have you made yourself exactly. already? Exactly. So, so capacity building is very crucial. It's very key. Right? You need to put your house in order. You need to keep your books. You need to show to a bank that you're bankable before you're able to attract the kind of funding that you need. So as a right? finance person, yeah. do you think that if Amara comes to you, because mm -hmm. you know, the way you were just smiling and all that, you think that she's ready, she's for, ready finance. for finance? Absolutely. We can have that conversation offline. <laughs> wow, that's, that's amazing. So what are the things that you look out for as a financial um, expert? So really, um, again, SMEs, small businesses, they're very critical um, to economic growth, you know, their contribution to job creation, etc. That's the real sector. Like, there's been a lot of talk in the news um, about lending to the real sector to develop the economy. For the economy to grow the way that we need it to grow as an emerging market or a frontier market, right, you need to have the real sector driving the economy. So we need to support small businesses, you know, help them scale, give them funding, help them build capacity. 
essentially. So, so that's what we look for. As a business, without funding, with your own funding, we want to see how well you've grown the business. What kind of turnover do you do? Yeah. You so know, you're serious as exactly. well. Exactly. And that's and where Amara's detailing to, to attention <laughs> comes in. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's really impressive. Well done. And she's Thank not you. only doing that for Mara Cruz. Yeah. She's helping other women. Women to do it. Know, which like is a very coach, impressive. A business yeah. coach type thing. That's very impressive. Well done. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Thank Amara. You. Thank you so much. I, I mean, it's always uh, time runs. They say when you're having fun. It does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, thank you so much, Amara, for coming, and thank we you. hope you know to get a lot, uh, a lot of young women on that platform because we know it's important for us to build SMEs in Nigeria. That's why we bring topics like this Absolutely. on the show. All right, so you can catch a repeat broadcast at eight at three p.m. tomorrow. Remember, you watch us live from Fridays to Sundays at eight p.m. as we continue to bring thought-provoking and engaging, informative conversations to your screen. So. Um, it's been an insightful conversation, ladies. I hope you had fun. I did. Did I you? Sure did. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed myself. All right, so remember, you can keep the conversations on all our social media platforms as we continue to hear what you are saying. So in case you missed the quote for today, listen again. As long as you're going to be thinking, no. Think. Anyways, think big. Think big. <laughs> so I'm, I ought to be shipping to America. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>